Okay, so we're going to start our code calculations. And we're going to start with tubing. So we're going to either find the minimum thickness for a piece of tube in order to hold back pressure, or else we're going to find the maximum pressure that a tube can hold. So um, you should have already gone through the first two sections um, where we'll learn how to find material properties and just a little overview of the code documents. If not, please go back and just take a look at those. In that first section, uh, what I outlined to you is that there's a uh, ASME code document that you're going to need, and this is what we're going to use over the next little bit. So make sure you have a copy of it. I suggest if you can, print one out um, and you have a paper copy in front of you, but as a minimum, have the PDF available. It can be easy enough to just follow uh, sample questions or use the PDF, but one of the things that you want to do in this section is really train yourself to actually be able to read the code and interpret it. So I always suggest have that copy available and make use of it. And you can find it in a number of places on Blackboard. I have it posted in a bunch of different places. Okay, so if we take a look at the code, we're going to go through sort of page by page for what we need to do for tubing. So the first place that we want to go is the very first page of the document, page number one, and this is outlines PG27, so paragraph 27. And down at the bottom, what it says is cylindrical components under internal pressure. So in section one, the paragraph 27 outlines the calculations of thicknesses and maximum allowable pressure for piping, tubing, drums, and header. So this section, PG27, is going to outline what we need to know for this week's material. We're starting with tubes, and then after that, we'll do drums, shells, headers. Okay, so if we flip ahead a couple pages to page number three of your document, what you have is PG 27.2, Formulas for Calculation. Okay, and if we look at PG 27.2, this is our first equation that we get. And what it is, is for tubing. Be very careful because we have a number of different categories of, of components. So this is for tubing, and you'll clearly see that marked in your question. This is a superheater tube, or this is a economizer tube. So make sure you're looking for that word tube. And when you see tube, this is likely the equation that you're going to use. Now it's up to and including five inches, uh, 125 millimeter tube. Um, and likely you're not going to be in a position where you're going to be tricked with that dimension. But just note that it does have a limit to the size of that tube. Okay. These are for non-bimetallic uh, tubes, they're for bare tubes, so we don't have any external strengthening to the tubes or extra size. And if they're just tubes, here's how we calculate them. We have two equations, one of them is for thickness, T, and then the other variation is if we want to calculate P, which is known as the MAWP, or the Maximum Allowable Working Pressure. In that equation, we had a number of different variables, a number of different symbols that were used. Um, and so if you go to the next page, you have a list of all the symbols that are used in this paragraph. And so PG 27.3 lists out your symbols. And so we have a whole list of different symbols. Some of them are applicable to your equation. Some of them are not. They're used in different places. Um, but it's a list of all of the different things that are, are used. Okay, so that's a pretty handy um, value for you um, to be able to reference what is what. Okay. Um, in addition, some of these have spots where it references more information. So for instance, uh, we're going to look at one here the thickness factor for expanded tube ends a little later, and we're going to be referenced to another section of the code to get more information about that. So CPG 
Just as a summary for what we're going to need for tubing, we have a number of things. We have outside diameter D, this thick thickness factor, we'll talk about that, lowercase e, wall thickness T, P, capital P, M A W P, which is our maximum allowable working pressure, uh, S, which is our maximum allowable stress, that's the value we'll get from our section 2 property tables that we looked at in the previous section and then we have w weld joint reduction factor a um, couple of notes number one note the units so instead of using our standard units where we might use meters as our measurement and pascals as our pressure um, in this case as long as we're consistent we're okay with our equations. So as long as pressures are in the same thing uh, as stress and all of our distances are measured the same. However, the convention that we usually use is going to be let's put our measurements in millimeters and let's put our stresses and pressures in MPA. Last thing to note is that when we talk about the stress that's created inside a boiler, it's only create it when we have pressure that's above and beyond the atmospheric pressure that's pushing against the outside. So we do measure our stress in, or sorry, our pressure in the boiler as MPA, but in gauge pressure. Typically we might talk about KPA as the boiler pressure. Um, so just note you have a factor of a thousand to move it to MPA. Okay, so let's talk about just two uh, things that are a little bit unusual or you just need to have a bit of theory on for doing your calculations. So E is the thickness factor for expanded tube ends, okay, and it was listed out in our symbols there. And if we go to 27.4.4, what we have is a little section here, okay, and we got a whole bunch of information that's listed. Okay, Here's what this is talking about. I got a little diagram there. So the first, I don't know, the top 90% of this is talking about one attachment method. So if we expand a tube into a hole, so we have say a tube sheet and we stick our tube in and then in order for it to be attached we expand it out so it, it is tight within that hole. Well, when we expanded it, we've changed the structure of that tube. And so this statement talks about what do we need to do if we've expanded that tube. We're probably going to have to add extra thickness to the tube to account for the weakening that we've just done by expanding it. The last statement in this section talks about our next attachment method. And our next attachment method is when we weld tubes. So the tube's attachment is by what's known as strength welding or welded attachment to the header or the drum or wherever we're attaching it to. Okay, um, And in this case, E, we don't add any extra thickness because we don't weaken the tube and most of your questions are going to indicate strength welded as the connection. So this is the most typical application of this. It's pretty rare I would think that you would get an expanded tube question. So you should be aware that you're looking for that kind of key term strength welded or welded connection um, and in that case right at the very bottom of that note, E is equal to zero. Okay. We have one other um, that sometimes shows up. So the code books that you may have at your TSSA exams, uh, I believe don't have this clause added in. Um, however, more recent versions do. So let's just talk about it. Um, there is a W value, a lowercase w, um, weld joint strength reduction factor. Okay, and what that is, is we have a PG26, which is actually on page like two and three. So it's a pretty large section of this, this uh, chapter. 
Um, but we have these tables where we have a factor that we can pull out of the table depending on different temperatures of material and different types of material. And it is for components fabricated with a longitudinal seam weld. And a longitudinal seam weld is when we have a weld that goes all the way along the length of that tube. Okay. And basically what's been found is that certain materials at high temperatures can fail along those welds um, over time. Uh, and so there's a factor that's been put in to say these tubes have been identified as a problem and they're not going to be able to hold as much pressure as we think they can. However, for you guys, uh, this really only happens at very high temperatures with very certain specific materials. And what we, and, and certain manufacturing types, and realistically, you shouldn't get a question that requires you to go to this table to find out the material um, weld strength reduction factor. Um, so I'm going to say W is going to be 1 for just about every application at your third class level. However, you still need to go and make sure that if you do have a specified material out of this table at a fairly elevated temperature, you may need to find a value for W for your application. Okay, so with that, we've kind of covered off the theory of what we need to know in order to solve a tubing problem. And we'll do a couple of examples in the next section with uh, tubing questions.